This is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. In February, Autodesk product managers began talking to the media about Autodesk Inventor Fusion. That's Autodesk answer to its rival Siemens synchronous technology. Why choose between direct modeling and history-based modeling? Inventor Fusion technology delivers the only seamless bi-directional integration of both design methods. Well, four months later, after the first video clips appeared. The Autodesk Inventor Fusion code is actually here. It's now downloadable as a technology preview. So I'm going to give you a tour of the early code and show you what I found. When we think of direct modeling, we usually associate it with the ability to push and pull surfaces at will to shape our models in 3D. But we don't necessarily expect the same push-pull functions to be available in the 2D sketching mode. We think of 2D as the precision drawing mode. But with Inventor, I find that your 2D profiles, lines and arcs respond to the same push-pull operations as the surfaces would respond to in the 3D mode. For the most part, when you want to make an adjustment in 3D, you'll probably use the move face command to make adjustment. Suppose you want to drop the height of this block, for instance. You can do this by pushing the top face down. You'll notice that the dialog box asks you how far you want to move the face. But what if you only know the height you want to end up with, not how many units you need subtracted? That's why the little anchor point command comes in handy. You double-click on the move handles to activate it, which lets you anchor the distance from another plane. Now you can enter the desired height. If you're importing a part from another CAD program, you can use the Find Feature command to let Inventor Fusion automatically scan the part and identify the features that make up the overall structure of your part. What you get is a bill of features, or rather a catalog consisting of all the faces and the bodies. You'll find that populated under something called the browser. When you pick an edge, like I'm doing now to apply a rounded corner here, you notice that the software is capable of identifying related edges and automatically selecting it. Suppose you need to move a feature and you have actually imported that part so you don't have a history tree to tell you how that feature was created. In direct editing, you'll simply select the entire item and drag it along the axis to move it, like I'm doing right now. I believe that's one of the appeals of direct editing packages. You can create dimensions in 3D by selecting an edge or a face and dragging out the values. But do you know that you can also double click on it, once again to activate the little anchor symbol, then by entering a new dimension, you change the 3D geometry, because your new value forces the 3D geometry to readjust itself. That's another way of reshaping a model. Bear in mind though, sometimes it doesn't work. In this instance, when I try to adjust the geometry on a face that involves a rounded corner, the software doesn't seem able to resolve the conflict. Similarly, when I make a drastic edit on this imported part, a step file actually, it caused a hole to disappear. In another case, an additional feature somehow resulted when I pull on this face. A 
Aside from those kinks, the software is quite easy to pick up. The interface is intuitive and it's pretty good at automating patterns. In this release, Inventor Fusion is strictly a direct editing program. But Autodesk told me that in a later release, you will be able to make a direct edit, then choose to continue to design in direct editing mode or return to the history based environment, where you'll be allowed to convert your direct edited feature into a parametric feature. While at the present, Inventor Fusion's nearest rival, Solid Edge with synchronous technology, asks you to choose one or the other either work in parametric solid edge or move to solid edge with synchronous technology altogether but you can't jump back and forth so if Autodesk can provide a two-way street that's something of a holy grail a tantalizing possibility to get the best of both worlds I along with many in the CAD community look forward to the day till next time this is Kenneth Wong a hybrid editor who reports in both video and text for desktop engineering